right. Welcome to Valuable Coaching. Uh, Miles Holland, my co-host, Kevin Pratt. Um, you can find us on YouTube at Valuable Coaching. You can also find us on Rumble, um, follow us on Instagram, and you can now find us on podcasts on Spotify and Google Podcasts as well, um, and some of your other common podcast domains. Um, tonight, we're uh, lucky to have Matt Houlihan from Bay to Bay, the uh, coach and director, and Kevin's going to go ahead and give him a little bit of a, an introduction. Yeah, it's my honor and pleasure to uh, introduce Matt Houlihan. He is the proud son of Tim and Stephanie Houlihan. Matt grew up in San Jose, where he went to uh, St. Francis, which is a great high school up in there, private school. After that, he was a University of Pacific Tiger, and he played outside hitter and was a sports management major. There is where he met his wonderful bride and now wife, Ariel. And now they are currently running Bay to Bay, where Matt actually, before he went to college, played club volleyball at. And they have two amazing, wonderful daughters, Hallie and Riley. So Matt, it's a pleasure to see you. We're real proud you're on. How are you doing? Doing great. Thanks for the fantastic intro, Kevin. I, I'm i impressed. I'm impressed with your knowledge of, of me. It's good stuff. But thank you for having me on and been, been enjoying watching your guys' uh, videos over the past couple of weeks. So I'm, I'm honored to be invited uh, and, and excited to chat with you guys. Yeah, well, uh, we're very excited to have you on today because um, the first club coach and director we've had on, we've had a couple of college coaches and, you know, we're excited to kind of see that level. Um, we both coach there ourselves and um, we know you're running a great program there. So when you took over a few years ago, what was kind of your philosophy in, in taking Bay to Bay kind of to a new level? Yeah, we took over. So my wife and I took over in 2013 after I graduated from college. Uh, I think the philosophy when we started was just like, don't mess it up. Like we, I was a 21, we were 21 and 22 taking over uh, a volleyball club. And so I think for us, when we started, it was a lot of, you know, trial by fire and just kind of figuring things out as we went uh, and trying to understand what, you know, the club scene looked like. Because of course, going from, going from a player in club, going through college and coaching for the club, and then moving into a director position where you're kind of overseeing a whole lot of different aspects. Um, when we first started, it was really just, let's, let's see how it goes here and, pick, and, and make sure we're, we're understanding kind of where Beta Bay is at, you know, knowing where we kind of want to get to uh, and, then, and then figure out some pieces from there. So I think for us, it was a lot of just see, see where we're at currently, take stock and then, you know, maneuver the ship to the direction that we want to start moving. Um, yeah, so I think that's the, the initial phase, at least. That's, that's awesome, Matt. You know, one thing, as a current club coach who gets to coach against you guys a lot, you know, if, if I was a parent and I had a young man, you know, boy in high school, one thing that would actually be really important to me is the caliber of coach. Not only are they good, but do they conduct themselves in a proper behavior? Are they teaching life skills? And one thing I, from an outsider's point of view, going against your coaches, they're very classy, they're very respectful. And one thing I wanted to ask you, because now you've had the club for a while, how do you go about the process of hiring your coaches? Yeah, that's a great question. I think um, when we first started to the place that we're at now, we only have one coach that was with us from year one. Um, and so that's, you know, part of that's just kind of the passing the baton and different people coming into play. Um, but a lot of it was just kind of drawing upon our connections within the volleyball community, first and foremost. So knowing the people, having long, steady relationships, we have the benefit of having uh, a number of coaches that played for Bay to Bay when, when they were players. So guys that are working in the area, you know, we're, we have the benefit of having, you know, the tech sector in this area. So there's a lot of jobs, there's a lot of opportunity. So we get a, a fair amount of volleyball people up here. Um, but just because you're a former volleyball player doesn't mean, you know, that you're going to translate into a, a fantastic volleyball coach. Uh, and so part of the thing that we've done um, just to get to try and get a good grasp of where people are at uh, is to bring them in and actually kind of do a low, low commitment level type of on the job training just to get to get to feel out coaches. So whether it be, you know, youth clinics, whether it be um, some open gyms or even just, you know, rec league volleyball stuff where we get to meet people really trying to understand guys beyond just your knowledge of the game because to be to be quite honest I think that's 50 percent probably less in terms of what makes a great coach 
uh, it's really your ability to just be a great person too. So if you can get the, if you can get a great person that knows nothing about volleyball, I would take that over a bad person who has the, the, the smartest brain for volleyball in the world. Um, and so a lot of it just came from, from drawing upon our internal connections, asking our coaches as well. Cause you know, my, my coach's tree of, of friends and guys that I knew in the area, you know, that, that got tapped out pretty quickly. Uh, so just trusting on the coaches that we have and having them reach out into their, into their networks and, and bringing those people in and then just doing the best job we can to retain them. You know, if, if we've got someone great, we want to do everything we can to keep them and make sure they're happy. Um, because, you know, for, for club volleyball, this is not professions for most people. It's, it's a hobby and a passion. And we want to nurture those passions wherever we can uh, and assist and just make it as easy as possible and remove headaches. If you can do that, then that's where you build a great staff. And it, it definitely did not start, you know, it, it didn't happen overnight for us, for sure. It took, a, it took a while for guys to kind of fill their spots and figure out what age group worked really well for a coach or, you know, what, what type of dynamic they did really well with, which assistant coaches did they really bond with. And uh, I think we've been lucky in the sense that we've, we've gotten those things pretty sorted out um, as we've gone through a couple of years here. I think that's great. So many uh, clubs I've seen are uh, high school programs as well. It's just a matter of finding coaches and they just kind of stick them in a spot and um, they don't really go much deeper than that. And for you know, sure, you, yeah. you need to move on, you move on. So, yeah. Hey, um, don't get me wrong. Like we, we've, we've made bad hires as well. I, I yeah. think everyone's been there. You, you know, sometimes it's, uh, it's really just a matter of, you know, when you, when you've got someone and you, you think, you think that you can kind of handle a commitment or you think someone can handle the commitment of a full season. And, you know, for boys volleyball, there's a nice dynamic of the season's kind of split in two. And so you get these kind of broken up chunks. It's not one super long season, um, but there's always those points where you're like, you get to that place of asking coaches of, or just trying to make sure of like, is this something that you want to do? Right. And if the answer is not no, if you're not excited to be there, then there's no problem. We're, we're, we're lucky where we have coaches who are able to, to fill those roles wherever. Um, and we, you know, we could add more teams and we could bring in, you know, wh whichever person applies for our, for a job online to, to take that group, but it just doesn't bode well in the long run. So those, those just become big headaches down the road. So making sure you got quality people, introducing them to, to the, to the club, to the atmosphere, making sure they're bought into that. I think that's, that's big. Uh, and you're not always going to get it right, but but being able to pull that trigger quickly when you know you got it wrong, because everyone's going to make some mistakes here and there. Uh, but then at the same time, when you know you got it right, go all in, push those chips in for that player or that that coach, excuse me. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you alluded to the fact that you started, uh, you know, being the director of this club at such a young age. Is this something you knew coming straight out of college that you wanted to do? Because um, you also have been the assistant or a volunteer assistant at, at Stanford with their men's program. Um, or, or was this just something that kind of happened for you? Yeah, funny, uh, funny story. Um, when I first went to University of Pacific, sport management was my major. So my first class within the major was intro to sport management. And probably within the first month, uh, we were assigned a piece from my professor Kohler, remember her name still, uh, assigned us a, a, a homework assignment to basically go interview someone who had a job that we would want coming out of college. And so I called up my former club director, Julie Keller, uh, and I talked to her on the phone for probably two hours. And the Kellers are, were longtime family friends and Brad, who started Beta Bay, had, had moved on to, to coaching in college and um, all those types of conversations were, were kind of going on. And Julie was always giving me the elbow of, hey, when do you want to take this over? Kind of jokingly when I was coaching for the club. And I've never truly probably thought about it seriously until senior year when I was like, oh, I need to get my life together here. Um, and then uh, had some conversations with them. And, you know, Julie was retired and, and ready to move on from, from having to, to take care of Beta Bay. And, you know, I was young and probably stupid. And my wife, Ariel, whose parents ran a club in D.C., uh, where she grew up was like, you know how much work you're about to get yourself into. Are you sure you want to do this? And I was like, yeah, I think this is great. What better job could you do coming out of coming out of college? And you know, definitely learned a lot in those uh, those first couple of years. But um, as we went through the process, I think you know that was just something that looked like a ton of fun from the outside, um, or at least on paper. And we've truly enjoyed it as we've gone through. Um, 
as for college coaching, you know, the volunteer assistant job is, is perfect for me because coach Kossi, who is the, the absolute man, uh, knows if, if I've got something going on, if I've got a kid's birthday party or if I've got, you know, whatever it may be, I don't need to be there. Um, and whenever I can be there, awesome. So, you know, for me, haven't wanted to do college coaching, but have really enjoyed getting to kind of scratch that super competitive itch uh, of getting to work with them. Yeah, you know, uh, speaking of club, Coach Matt, you know what it's like that last day at JOs, 17s, everyone's excited. Maybe your club medal, you know, I'm sure they're in the open doing great. And I find it interesting where all these parents think they know how to recruit and how to do it, but then they realize, and it's okay that they're like, wow, there's a lot of pieces. There's a lot of moving pieces to this. And every year I see Ariel and you assisting 17s, going to be 18s. And it's just incredible. Your club has produced uh, student athletes going to Irvine, UC Irvine, Princeton, uh, really high level programs. Uh, what's your what's your piece of advice? What do, what do you do at that club that separates you? Because it just seems like every year you're pumping out kids going to college. In terms of recruiting, you mean? Yes. Yeah. So I think I mean, it all starts with the kid. You know, I you know we have tons of recruiting conversations, or we'll get emails from parents being like, "Hey, can we sit down and talk about recruiting?" And our answer is always no. No, we can't talk to you about recruiting. If, if your son wants to email us, for sure. If your son wants to set up a time to chat, absolutely. Because uh, when it comes down to it, it's it's got to be this player-driven dynamic. You know, Ariel and I can have all the relationships in the world, but I'm not going to stick my neck out and be like, hey, USC, you need to recruit this guy. I'm going to I'm gonna give them information if they ask for it. I'm going to help the player reach out to them. I'm going to help, uh, help them you know, if, if what they really want to do is go play in college, we'll, we'll assist those kids uh, in whatever we can. So I think it, it really comes down to just, it, it's not a magic sauce from us of, you know, we have all these relationships. Yeah, sure, that helps. Yeah, having having a pipeline per se, once you get a kid from a club into a program, they just have a better understanding of how they're trained or, or what that, you know, that dynamic looks like and you build relationships that way. But I think it really, it really just comes down to for us is, trying to ignite the passion in these kids and put it in their eyes uh, of what's possible. Um, and so, you know, the, the example that we use all the time is just the more that we can expose our younger kids to our older kids and our younger kids to our alumni, whether it be kids coming back and being, a, you know, second assistants on teams or just coming back and playing for an alumni game or when they're in town to scrimmage, that type of thing shows kids what they can be and what they want to work towards. So if we can ignite that passion, that's a win, right? Because that makes them more motivated to train, makes them more motivated to go out and do what it takes to reach the next level, which makes our teams better, which makes our job as coaches much easier, right? So all those things start to build on top of each other. Um, and really, it's, it's just kind of giving them the right push in the right direction. Um, I think that's probably the biggest thing that I've seen that, that we've taken uh, is, is making sure it's player driven and not mom and dad driven of, hey, get my son into school here, that it's not going to work. Yeah, I mean, I, that's one thing we've heard the last two weeks from uh, both our college coaches really was that they, they're looking for people with good character, not just uh, people who have the right athletic tools. So it, it seems like you're building, you know, young men with great character. Is there somebody that really helped kind of show you that that, that was the path to success? Um, somebody who mentored you that, that kind of led you in that direction? Hmm. I, I think I probably draw, we, we all draw from our personal experiences for sure. So, you know, my, my recruitment journey, we, I talk about a lot. Ariel, my wife talks about her recruitment journey as a women's volleyball player, of course, very different, you know, 15 schools all going after her, taking multiple visits. And for me, you know, I was playing in Northern California when Northern California was, was definitely much smaller, much, much lower scale in terms of the competitiveness on the national level. Um, and so I was at least felt like an unseen kind of, kind of player. And, you know, I didn't know anything about college recruiting. I, I just thought, you know, college coaches come to me, like that's how, that's how it happens. Right. Um, and it was not a surprise that I did not get many, many calls come June 15th, my, my junior year, uh, or sophomore year summer. Um, so I think, you know, we, I draw from that experience of just saying, you know, it's definitely going to be one of those things where, where you're driving, driving the ship. 
Um, and then just talking to coaches. So obviously from, you know, I, I ask um, the coaches at Stanford all the time, if I have a question, you know, I can call up Costi and say, hey, what do you think about this scenario? Uh, or any coach really in general that we've had some relationships with um, and we can, we can kind of draw on their experience with it, their, their different, um, different opinions um, to kind of, kind of shape that. But I think it really mainly comes from Uh, looks like stiffer and just knowing you know girls versus boys uh, and what really needs to be be the driving factor so uh matt uh a question i have for you is i noticed i would say in the last three or four years social media is, is just blown up and as you know and i would say you guys do a lot of special things i've checked out like you really champion when your kids dress up for halloween and you make a contest out of it or I noticed lately you have a letter on on a more professional level on your LinkedIn account, like Thankful Tuesday. And you go in great detail about how you're thankful for this coach. It seems like you're building great culture. What what has social media done for your club to really boost you guys up? And how is that a pillar in your club? Well, first off, Kevin, thank you for noticing. That's very kind of you. Um, yeah, I think I think it kind of comes back to mm, the idea of like we took over. We're twenty one or twenty two. You know, if we're going to be good at something, let's be really good at, at the young kid stuff. Um, it, it probably just that we're 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 very comfortable with it, but it's morphed for sure just into it's a it's a microphone for 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 our organization, um, and and we don't own a facility as well. So I think the other part of it too is it's it's just it's an open door into what we do. Right. You can't you can't come and knock on Bay's door and come see it. You know, we have our set time, our set practices of, of when we get to go in and, and borrow space. Um, and so we live on social media. Right. Those videos are there. Um, you can go on and you can see, you know, our film reviews. You can go on and you can see these Halloween costume contests. You can see all these different things all online. Uh, I think it's, you know, if you were to if you were to pick out, you know, looking through our social media, what was something that jumped out to you right off the bat? I would say if I was a child, I think it's really cool how the youngsters and the old kids, like when you guys do your circle and you're cheering and you, it, the circle gets bigger and bigger and no one seems to else do that at JOs. And you can hear Bay to Bay like, oh, Bay to Bay is getting going. And that's like 15 courts away. And then you look at your phone because we all have social media and go, there they are, you know, and they're, they're dancing and doing their thing. And so I think that just seems like you guys are all really connected and you're connected with every age group and you highlight every age group. That's what I'm impressed by. Yeah, I think, you know, social media allows us a ton of leverage um, in our ability to, you know, to, to grow the things that we want to grow. So you, you talk about the cheer, you know, putting that on there. That's something that we show. When we post that, it means something. I think that's a big piece of of what we look for with our social media strategy um, is just how do we amplify the things that we want to create, make sure we're highlighting it so that it keeps reproducing. Yeah, that, that is awesome. Cause again, um, I just, I feel like so many clubs, they, they kind of focus in on, you know, their one or two best teams. Maybe they throw all the kids on one team um, that are the best. And that's, that's kind of all they go for for that season. So it's, yeah, it is great to see. I mean, I know one of the pictures I posted today on social media of you was, you sitting down with obviously some very young volleyball players. And it, it's great to see that, um, you know, you're, you're getting an impact very early on. Cause um, I know for a lot of us, we started in different sports, didn't even necessarily know what volleyball was till we were, um, you know, 12 to 14 years old, you know, at, at the least. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's great to see you building that culture from a very young age with some of these boys and really growing volleyball. Um, you know, you, you have been, unfortunately, around two programs that, that kind of, you know, ended in Pacific and now Stanford, unfortunately. But are you happy with the growth of, of men's volleyball? I mean, it seems like across the country and, and in Northern California, um, it is growing pretty rapidly, even though we've, we've lost a couple of uh, programs that were pretty, you know, pretty awesome. Um, the years. Yeah, 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 for sure. No, I'm, I, I feel like I'm the kiss of death, honestly. <laughs> you know, the year after I graduate Pacific, Acts, you know, I mean, you're, you're four, you're five with Stanford now, Acts. Um, we are, we're definitely still fighting for Stanford. So 
quick plug, keep chugging along, <clears throat> save Stanford men's volleyball, like it on Facebook, do all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, you know, I think satisfied is probably not the, the right word. I think there's, there's definitely been growth. That's been very good. D3 and AIA, ton of good growth. Um, of course, would love to see some more growth at the division one level to get some real power schools, getting it added. Um, but you know, that stuff's currently probably above my pay grade. Uh, we're really focusing on trying to do our part of kind of that grassroots effort. The more that we can grow from a younger age, I think that's, <coughs> excuse me, you guys are making me nervous. I've got like this itch in my throat right now. Um, thinking about the grassroots effort of, of what we can do to help, help grow um, the younger kids, specifically at grade school level, I think that's where we've seen the biggest, biggest improvement. And I think if you look at kind of Northern California as a whole, um, the reason why Northern California has gotten better has been, has been because our foundation of players and our, our pool to pick from has gotten larger. And that's because probably about 10, 12 years ago, there was a big push of additional schools at kind of the grade and middle school level that added in programs. And when that happens, you know, that's, that's most kids first introduction to, to boys volleyball. And from there, the amount of kids that we have sign up for clinics, they're like, Hey, I, you know, I just finished up my, my sixth grade season at Miller middle school. And I really liked it. I want to check it out more. That's how we start to get more kids involved. And, and once there's demand from the bottom, demand will, will, will trickle, trickle up, at least in our opinion. So that's the, that's the push that we've been making. And uh, Coach Matt, you know, Miles here alluded to it earlier, but one thing I wanted to pick your brain about is, you know, I've been involved in club volleyball now for about seven years, and, and obviously you have. You played at the collegiate level. We all three did here. My question to you is, you know, when you look at a club, all their directors or maybe their, you know, highlighted coach who's their main coach, I would say – 95% of the time, coach coaches 18s. Um, and that that's fine. I get it. But one thing that I admire is I was strolling around the convention and I looked to my left and Matt Houlihan's there coaching. I believe it was a 12s team. And I went to you and I said, that's cool. You're coaching two teams this year. And you're like, nope, I'm coaching the 12s. I'm starting with the 12s and I'm, yeah, I direct, you know, the rest of the club. Can you talk about that experience, why you went that direction? And if you're going to continue to with the youngsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when when I first took over, I told Ariel one of my goals was to coach every age group, uh, and so I've definitely done my fair share of of older teams. You know, bounced between 18s. I started with 16s and took a team from 16s up to 18s, and you know, bounced around at those older age groups. And um, I've always tried to, at least in the summertime, assist our 12s team, our youngest team, um, and that's you know, kind of that same idea of of building the the pyramid, the base of of our club, getting the younger kids going and and trying to build from there. Um, but I always wanted to experience each age group and just see the different, you know, struggles that coaches or players were going through, understanding the, the things that parents needed at those different places. And um, what we found is just investing in the youth, you can't go wrong, right? Because we have great coaches, we do. We're, we're very lucky with that sense, no doubt about it. Um, if you can put someone who is really invested at the younger age group, someone who is just gung ho, ready to rock, can teach the fundamentals, can again, kind of to harken back to that same idea of just igniting the passion for a kid, that's so big, right? Because there's a, there's a lot of, if you, if you think about it in terms of, of a club as a business as well, there's a lot of lock-in effect when you have a good experience with a club, right? If, if you have a good experience as a 12 year old, what's, why would you think about going somewhere else? You know, because you've got your friends, you, you had a good experience with your coach, you get to move on and move up and you're building from there. So if you build a solid foundation of the skills, you build a solid foundation of the understanding of the club and its culture, that carries on and that builds momentum. It's kind of like that snowball effect of you just put that snowball up and you roll it down the hill. And as they go from 13s, 14s, 15s, 16s, it gains momentum and, and then it attracts people into, you know, people want to be a part of that when that happens. So I think that's been... That's been a big thing that that we've tried to do. And, and as I kind of got down to that younger age group, I think last year, you, what you're probably talking about is I took 13s, um, which was a, an awesome, super fun group of just ballers, like really, really good kids. Um, that's, you know, that's kind of the point where I was like, okay, like I want to I wanna stay here, I think. 
uh, or at least get back to this as, as best I can. So I'm, I'm coaching 14s this year. It's the last age group that I hadn't coached yet within the club. Um, and so still trying to just stay involved with the younger kids as best we can and, and really take ownership of that. And I think it's, it's one of those ones too, where I don't know if have you guys coached 14s or anything younger than that. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys, you probably know the pains as well of what comes with that, the, the younger and experienced team. It's not, it's a different, it's a different coaching experience. And for some, it's not as fun. Right. There's some coaches that are like, I, I just can't, I can't even, I can't even do that right now. Like, I just, I want to coach fast offense. I want to work on jump serves. I want to work on different, you know, speed and spacing and how to run these different routes and all kinds of super high level volleyball, which is great. And, you know, I love that too. It's why I volunteered at Stanford so I can scratch that itch. But at the youngest age group, if you can coach the young kids really well and you can get them super engaged and super fired up about the sport, um, then you've got something really, really good on the hand, on your hands. And as they move forward in your coaching staff, you could have a mediocre coaching staff and you're going to have, if you have great kids who have a, have a ton of fun and great understanding, you're going to have success. Um, so sorry for nerding out on my 14 under uh, age group, but definitely something that I'm passionate about. Definitely something I think if you're, if you're a club coach out there and it's something you can get behind and excited about, go to your club director and let them know like, Hey, give me a younger kids team. Let me take the reins and run with it. Um, you, you will become an invaluable member of a club. Yeah, I know. I mean, Kevin and I both teach uh, middle and elementary school kids too. And so, I mean, I, I've seen it even with kids with other sports, even just giving them a quick intro to, to certain things. And when they when they take off with it and get excited about it, it's, it's fun to see. And um, I kind of like you, I, I've been doing mostly middle school kids that are brand new to volleyball and there is something very rewarding to having them leave and be excited to go try out for high school and, and maybe go play at a bigger club. Um, that's, that's pretty special. And then again, yeah. trying to maybe coach something a little bit more dynamic uh, by doing high school, but it is very rewarding to have those little, you know, younger kids who are looking up to you and you can give them a good foundation and know that they can move on. And like you said, kind of no matter who their coaches are at that point, um, they can be, you know, successful and, and hopefully remember some, some good times. And for you, grow your club. I mean, that's that's a great philosophy, I think, um, to, to retain kids all the way through. Yeah, what better, I mean, what better experience can you have as a coach than to just see if, if, if you're taking kids who are raw and like kids who are just starting, for the most part, you know, we didn't have a team young. When we first started Bay to Bay, our youngest team was 14. That was our introduction team. If you get a, if you get a group of guys, and that's for a lot of clubs, if you get guys in that are brand new to volleyball, you know, they're like me and most probably you guys as well. We're basketball players or baseball players and they're trying out volleyball for the first time. And you get that like, aha, it clicked moment where they go up and they get a great swing or, or they figure out their serve or they figure out how to move their feet and pass. And you see that like general, just purely innocent excitement. Like that is such a good experience as a coach. Um, but, you know, I, I get that aspect as well of, you know, there's, there's people who it's, it's just how your mind works. And, and I think that's part of the, the club game or at least club director game is, is figuring out where people fit and trying to maximize, you know, their skill level. We have a coach, um, Matt Frankenstein and, and Ali Waleski, who actually KP to, to kick on your, uh, the, the LinkedIn thankful Thursday post coach Ali was the thankful Thursday coach this week. Um, who, who coached 14s and 13s for us for probably five years, and they just absolutely crushed it. Um, they, were, they are fantastic um, at setting the standard for young kids and getting them super excited. You know, we'd have kids enter our club, and, like, they're, they're leaving their, their 13 season. They're like, I just want to play for Coach Frank and Coach Alley. Like, that's all I want to do. Like, kids are just so excited to be a part of, of their team and their age group, and, and they just do such a wonderful job of, of setting up that season for them. Uh, and really teaching them what it's what it's like to kind of take that next step of going from the seven four net to the eight foot net and all that good stuff. So um, yeah, it's it's a really cool moment. It's a really cool thing if you can if you can muster up the uh, the patience is probably the biggest thing that you have to do when you're when you're hurting those twelve, thirteen, and fourteen year old cats. Um, that's one thing we you kind of alluded to it a little bit that we all probably started somewhere different, which we were actually surprised in a couple of our interviews so far. Uh, uh, Jason actually had started off basically playing volleyball pretty young age, but um, 
JB's where, a weirdo. But yeah, nothing, yeah. Surprise, nothing should yeah. surprise you with JB. <laughs> so, I mean, where where did you kind of get your start? Was it in basketball or, or other sports? And then how did, I mean, I've always been kind of interested in how people think those mesh together. And then if, if you encourage kids um, to kind of continue pursuing multiple sports, if if that's something that they want to do. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm, I'm probably... Uh, more of your typical case. Again, JB just being a weird kid and, you know, growing up in Roseville, playing volleyball, like who does that? Um, no, I'm, I was definitely started as volleyball, soccer, baseball, literally any sport but volleyball. Uh, both my parents played uh, basketball in college. Uh, my grandpa was a basketball coach, you know, so definitely basketball was my, my like top sport that I love to play. I think uh, my brother, my older brother, who was about four years older than me, got started with volleyball two years ahead of when I began. So I was probably about 11. He started playing volleyball and I was like, this is a, what are you doing, Brian? That's a girl sport, dude. Like stop. And, you know, I just kept on shooting hoops and slowly but surely he'd get me to play a little bit at home and, you know, we'd, we'd pepper in the backyard and, you know, we'd make up games to play whatnot. And, um, he finally convinced me to, to go to a tryout. Uh, this is, this is probably, a year after Beta Bay actually started. Um, so right right at the beginning of Beta Bay. So my brother was on the original Beta Bay team. The next year he got me to come to tryouts and I was like, mom, we, we pulled up to the parking lot of City Beach Volleyball Club was where we were hosting Beta Bay tryouts. And I was like, mom, take me away, man. I don't, I don't, I don't wanna go in there. This is, this is weird. This is not basketball, let's stop. Uh, and she's like, no, you, you said you'd do it. You gotta go in there and do it. Um, at least you need to try out. So I said, okay, fine. And went into tryouts and, um, you know, knew, knew nothing beyond what my brother had shown me was, you know, he hit some balls at me. Uh, and that was about the extent of my knowledge and a kid named Jeremy Georges, who was the 16 year old on the, on the older team for Beta Bay was helping run the tryouts. And I was so bad that, you know, they pulled me aside and kind of were like very kindly removed me from the drill. So the rest of the kids could play. And Jeremy was trying to teach me how to set and ball was falling through my hands and hit me in the face. And I shed a couple tears, but um, they were kind enough to put me on the 14 twos team as a 12 year old. And, you know, from there, I, I, I haven't stopped. So that was the, uh, that was the origin story for volleyball, at least for me. And, you know, I kept playing other sports as I went, but um, I think the, the, you know, the, the priority just kind of shifted as I started to figure out volleyball and got really excited about it, you know, you know, if you think about the the attention pie, that that pie just kept on getting bigger and bigger for volleyball and baseball fell away and then basketball fell away and soccer fell away. I tried out for football in high school because my dad was a football coach and and he cut me because I was too skinny and said I would break. And so then it was all volleyball from there. So um, this is kind of a trend going on in a lot of clubs. I noticed you guys do it too. What college coaches have you had come and run clinics for you guys and maybe what have you learned as a director and uh, which ones have come to kind of put a spark into Bay to Bay? Yeah, I mean, obviously we're lucky with having Stanford. Um, and so I get to <clears throat> I get to pull on Dan Orsine, Kosti and, and Shibuya for a number of things. So um, Kosti, Kosti coaches in our club because Cameron is some place for, for us as well. So it's, it's always good having him around in that sense. But we've had Niffin come. Um, we've had David Hunt. We've had, uh, let's see here who else has come Chris Burzins back when he was at Loyal Chicago um yeah we've had a number of coaches who've, who've come through as well just to kind of show face to practices and be around and, and all that good stuff Jerry Goldberg shout out to my brother-in-law coaching at Harvard we we pegged him to come for for a summer and he got to spend some time with his with his niece uh, so that one was fun as well but yeah I think it's it's always good just to get kind of some higher level, some higher level guys in the gym. And I think it, it gets, obviously gets the kids excited just to, you know, see a college coach who's, who's, who's come to be in our area and check out the club and see what's going on. And um, I think that's, there's, there's a ton of benefit to it. Um, and, you know, I've, it, we're, I'm at that age now too, where there's a lot of my friends or, or former teammates or opponents that, you know, I'm familiar with are, are getting into the coaching ranks. And so it's always fun to kind of, to, to see those guys as well. And um, so I think that's, you know, it's a, it's a great trend um, that, that we've had. And obviously that's, that's stunted currently, 
Uh, but there's some schools doing some creative stuff, doing, you know, some Zoom versions of a coach's clinic and whatnot um, to kind of get that that outreach going for clubs, which I think is is a is a big importance for for colleges currently is just keeping relationships with with clubs and, and the athletes that are out there in a time when, you know, you can't have those those in person meetings and stuff going on. But um yeah, have you guys for for your experience, because I know you're you've got Wave going on and Wave does a ton of great stuff as well. Have they had have they had any maybe this is a non-COVID time question, I'm sure, you know, being in Southern California, is that a pretty common thing for, for them to, to bring in some coaches and have some different series? Yeah, I, I, I just am amazed that Ren and Dean, I feel, is always trying to get 2% better every year or something, and, and the man is so driven. And every year at Wave, uh, we have Alan Knight for a day clinic, David Hunt one year, we've had UCLA come in, and then you know, obviously not during COVID right now, but we, uh, you'll turn the, turn around. You're like, oh, there's the GCU coach. There's the Princeton coach. There's IPFW. There's, we've had a ton PFW, of PFW. Come on, Kevin, you're showing your age. It's Purdue Fort Wayne now. No more. Yeah, Indiana. There you go. <laughs> but they, they, it's, it's great. And I, I think that there's club coaches like yourself and directors that really push for that. And, and it, it takes work. And I, you're kind of being humble about it, which is fine. And that, but you know, they want to come to your club and then you're getting them and you're exposing your kids, which is really a huge part. And I think it's a huge part if you're a parent looking at a club, because, you know, you said that the child has to be driven to play college, but it certainly helps when college coaches are constantly roaming around the club. And, uh, Brennan does a really good job at that. And Jed does it, it wave. And I know you do too. Up for in, sure. Uh, for sure. I think there's there's some there's some really good organizations out there that do just some fantastic work um, for club sports. Um, you know, I think as you look at like U sports in general right now, it's it, it's U sports taking a lot of a lot of heat or a lot of has gotten hit by COVID pretty hard. Uh, but you can kind of see the the people who who truly are really driven and passionate about it. I think Waves a fantastic example of guys that, that just hit the ground running when COVID hit and just tried to help their kids as best they could. Um, and there's, you know, there, there's a, there's a lot of great clubs in Southern California that I know that do the same thing. Um, but it, it, it truly does. Um, it truly does show those colors, I think in these times. So I think that's, that's super interesting. And if you, if you don't mind, I want to flip the script on you guys for a second, because I, there was a question I wanted to ask you guys um, for your guys' perspective, coaching club, playing in college. If, if you were to try and prioritize what you would want in a club coach could be top three things. What would be the, the top of that list? If you were looking for, you know, your, your kid growing up and playing club volleyball, what would you want from a club coach? Um, I mean, I have two boys who have been playing youth sports now. And um, again, most, most of the club sport or the, the sports so far have been like volunteer coaches. Um, my one son has been playing hockey and um I just like to see coaches that are excited, number one, excited to be there in coaching. Um, I feel like sometimes it's kind of odd. I've, I've seen it sometimes with younger coaches almost. It seems like they're just there to try and get some experience. And you'd think maybe they would be the ones with a little bit more energy, but sometimes it's the older coaches that really bring that. Um, so, I mean, I, I think just kind of showing by example some of the passion about the sport, I think is very helpful, especially to – and I would say like the 12 and under age group, I feel like that's what's helped me when I've been coaching those ages. Um, I, I would say too, uh, I, like you said, coaching those really basic skills. Um, I think too often people wanna jump right into something a little bit more advanced and they kind of forget about just breaking those down. I've had, a, I've kind of experienced that actually even in um, high school coaching, some is just, you know, they, they may know how to run a certain, uh, system they may know how to rotate and do all those things but they may not have the best uh the best skills uh when it comes to blocking or, or attacking or footwork and so again having that base uh with those younger coaches would really uh with those younger kids would really be most important to me and just just letting them play too um that's one thing like you said i, I like hearing that people uh who play all kinds of different sports try lots of different things I think too many kids now really get stuck in, you know, you like baseball, all right, you're playing baseball all the time until your arm falls off and you get a scholarship. Um, and that's just not, 
I mean, or that's your pro, your pro contract. <laughs> yeah, I've seen I've seen kids be really, you know, as as happy as, or as excited as they seem, um, kind of at surface level that they're doing well at a sport. You can just tell that they're not really excited to continue to do that for a long period of time. So those would probably be my three things. So. Yeah. Coach Matt, I think that's a fantastic question. And uh, I think a player perspective, you know, real quick, then I'll answer the parent. I, I get it. They're into the social media. How many Olympians have played? Who hits the hardest? Do you guys have fake tattoos on your neck? Do you guys shave your head for JOs? Like, I get it. Because when I was that age, there was a club that I was like, that club's pretty cool. You know, but growing up and, uh, you know, I'm realizing for me, if I was a parent and I had a child going to a club, it'd all be about life skills and not just like the ooey gooey life skills like, oh, you're teaching them how to shake hands after the game. You're teaching them how to say go bay to bay. That is really important. But what I have found when you have a premier club or a premier director, like, for example, it was crazy, but I, I was very comfortable doing it. I, I have a Olympian son on my team. And this Olympian dad is a beach volleyball guy, amazing guy. And I'm driving up to the club tournament, and one of my other coaches is like, yeah, that's a bummer. You got to bench him because he missed practice. And I was like, oh, it won't be a problem at all. I'm like, I'll go right to his dad and have that chat. And his dad gets it. And my point is, when I had that conversation with the son and I had it with the dad and I did it separately, the dad's like, good, that's exactly what you should do. Like, that's awesome. And like, there you go. There's an Olympian beach volleyball coach. They want us to do the right thing as a club. They want us to teach them the right life skill. And all I did to the kid is said, Hey, you know, you, you missed, you went for a weekend and went to a, you know, a birthday party. That's fine. And yeah, you can't start. And I actually think that, us club coaches get away from that. And I think if you're firm to your morals and values, that's what I'd want as a parent. And, and I would challenge you where you're at and where I'm at. We're in really, you know, great, sophisticated places. I mean, the place where I go, we got kids that go to Cathedral Catholic, bishops, you know, and you got, uh, you know, St. Francis, Bellarmine. They're high level people and you know you just they want fair and they want it the right way so that's what would be really important to me just that the club runs it the right way and yeah. i would not be mad at all if you're like yeah i benched your son because he didn't show up to practice but good you should yeah. you know <laughs> exactly right yeah i think uh it's the the old the age old adage of you know you get what you tolerate you know and i think it's, it's just setting those standards for sure i think those those are all all great points and you know, I think, I think every, if there's club coaches that listen to this, and if, if you can just really think about what it is that those life skills are that you want to teach, because I completely agree. I think it's so easy to just get caught up in like X's and O's and playing volleyball and teaching passing and this and that. Volleyball is not a profession. You know, it's, it's in, for maybe the 0.002% that will go on and play professional volleyball. Right. But what are the things that we're really teaching? And are we truly diving into those? Are you truly getting getting that that aspect engaged with? Right. And I don't know if what's the what's the policy on swearing on this podcast? Uh, we're trying not to. Okay. <laughs> then, I'll, then, I'll, then I'll I'll do the censored version. But if you can just if you can just give a damn as a coach, right? The more that you give a damn about your kids, the better it's gonna be. Right. Because I think that's what parents, when you think about club sports, if if you're thinking about parents, like you're not just paying for volleyball, you're paying for an adult who's actively invested in your child. That's not your, that's not you, right? Someone that's a different voice and different perspective because, you know, I, we hear it all the time of like, you know, I, I tell my son to do this and that, and, you know, goes in one year out the other. And, you know, if coach Matt or coach Ariel says you need to be here at 7 AM on the dot, they're making sure we're out the door by 620 to get there, you know, 15 minutes early. He's like, I've never seen that before. Right. It's because there's, you know, coaches play a hugely important role for a lot of kids, especially at this time, man. You know, you know, we're we're sitting here on a Zoom call and this is what kids are doing all day. Right. So when they get a brief respite from this and you know, you are the other person that's not the parent that they get to see for two or four hours a week, like, man, yeah, we, we gotta be we gotta be showing that we we give a damn about them, you know, not just of hey little Jimmy, hop in line, let's do some hitting lines. You know, it's 
how you doing, man? You know, what's, what's up with school this week? What's going on, you know, checking in with them and, and really trying to keep track. Cause I think that's a, it's, you know, we, we all probably feel, you guys probably can agree with us too. Of, you know, the zoom fatigue that everyone's on right now of, of, with all the virtual learning and, and stuff like that, it's, it's, it's real. And I think the more that we can show these kids that, that we're here and we care and we're, and we're passionate about them and, and want to help them, um, the more that we can really be not to be dramatic, but really, you know, saving some lives here of, of helping kids get through a, a really crappy time and, and, and having them have something that they get to look forward to. No, I, I you are hundred percent correct on that. I mean, it is a tough time for, for all these kids. And yeah, when there is somebody there that cares for them, um, no matter how simple it is, it definitely makes a huge difference right now. And um, I mean, I definitely commend you for running your program the way it is. And I certainly think too, we, we definitely need, um, we need good men to be helping create good young men right now. And um, it sounds like you're, you know, you're taking a club and, and really making sure that that's a huge part of it. And that, that's, uh, I mean, that's an awesome thing. So. Of course. Yeah. You know, uh, one thing I want to share before we let you go, Matt, and if you have anything, but I'm just super proud of you. You know, I met you when you were a freshman and I was a fifth year senior on the Tigers, you know, Pacific. And, you know, I, I got to learn a lot about you that, you know, that your grandfather, what he did at Santa Clara, I met your family. And it doesn't surprise me that you're having great success. And, you know, when we were cutting our teeth in sports and management, I remember um, quick plug that you and I ran an athletic department together at, at a high school. Blanks and Hughes, baby. Blanks and Hughes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, part of your sports management internship is you got to hang out with me. And I was so lucky just to pick your brain for a semester. And just like I told you when I called you a few weeks ago, I just really proud of you. And I, I know Coach Wartman is, as Tigers are, and we're rooting for you. And uh, tell your wonderful wife I said hello. And, uh, you know, if you have anything else to add, but thanks for coming. Of course. Yeah. I, I, I think I have to, I got to end with my, my quick brief favorite KP story. So I hope that doesn't scare oh. you, Kevin, but oh. don't worry. It's, it's all, I, I know the, 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 this is a safe space. So everyone should, should hear this, but it's, it's actually my first memory of KP. So it's, it's to piggyback the fact that I'm, I'm very proud of you as well. And just what you guys are doing, I think is awesome. And this story is a testament to that, but uh, the first time I ever met KP, he transferred, he came back from Nebraska. I believe you were volunteer assisting. Uh, and we were over at Jason Borton, the first guest on Valuable Coaching's apartment and sitting down, having, having a drink and just having a conversation. And I'm getting to know KP and KP's full of energy and full of life and all this good stuff. And man, he's excited to be back at UOP. And, you know, as the night dwindles on, he goes, hey, tomorrow morning, I'm making you breakfast. So get back here at, I think it was like 7.30. It was ridiculous. He was trying to wake me up at 7.30 on a Saturday morning in college. <laughs> I mean, okay, he's a fifth-year senior. I'm a freshman. I guess I got to do what this guy says. So wake up the next morning. I show up at 7.30. KP's already cooking. He has an apron on. And I walk in the door, and it's just, Matty, what's up, buddy? Come sit down. Come talk with me. That's and him. probably for, for 45 minutes while KP's cooking me a, a pretty decent bacon, egg, and cheese breakfast sandwich, just gave yeah. me the full rundown on just – Pacific's history and the and the guys that came before me and all the good stories of of just the people who who made the program what it was and and what it is and and, and what he wanted to accomplish coming back and you know telling some more stories and good stuff like that and you know it was then and there that you know I think I talked to Fortune that day I was like this guy's is is full of energy isn't it he's was like yeah he he will not stop and you haven't stopped since my friend and it's it's awesome to see and you know, I love seeing, I love seeing the passion from you and, and what you're bringing to, to so many kids out there. So you guys as well, of, of what you got going on right now, I love it. Keep it going, you know, keep, keep bringing on some great guests. I'm learning stuff from the first two weeks from, from coach Todd and coach JB. And I know you guys will keep doing some great stuff. So, so thanks for, thanks for letting me uh, talk story with y'all. All right. Well, yeah, thanks for being on with us, Matt. Um, Again, uh, you can find us on Valuable Coaching on YouTube. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe. And again, go ahead and find us uh, where, where you can find most podcasts, Valuable Coaching, and follow us on social media. Um, we do have Sam Crossan coming up next week as well. And so uh, another great uh, Pacific brain to pick about volleyball and, and life. So uh, thank you again so much, Matt, tonight for being on. Um, and, you know, we look forward to, to seeing great things from you. And follow Matt's club at Bay to Bay. They're great to follow. And then you got to find him on LinkedIn. Honestly, he's, he's doing some good stuff. I read his articles and I like it every time.
Thank you.